Hello, my name is Frances Fox and I'm a trained remote viewer. I am aligned with my mission and have been actually since I was a child. My mission is to bring extra information, particularly now at end times. We are getting together every Monday through Friday to do mantras for peace and prosperity. But there is such chaos out there that I added the word chaos to the title. And I'm going to share with you what it is that is going on in the other dimensions that has to do with this chaos. First, I'm going to show you a map that I drew in December 2022 that nobody, including myself, paid a lot of attention to. I put it up on X several times. Oh, dear. You cannot really see it. This is a map of the United States. You can see it enough. Where Texas is, there are semicircles. And the comment there is an invasion from the underworld, not an invasion of illegal aliens from the underworld, which when we as a group called the Mantristas went to see what was there, and it was an invasion from the underworld. All of that, the preamble to that was the BP oil spill where we broke the Earth's surface 5,000 feet under the Earth's surface and we broke through a protective barrier between us and the underworld, between humanity living on the crust and the underworld. Then I have spirals that indicate total chaos in the whole New York, Washington, D.C. area, and then another one in South Florida. And let's see if I can see the map. We have these ziggly lines across the United States. So what has happened that could validate what it is that I have on this map? that I did in December 21st, 27th, 2022. Well, certainly Texas has been invaded. Certainly Texas has issues that would indicate incredible chaos and incredible chaos, particularly in the other dimensions that then triggers the chaos in this dimension. The whole thing with the confrontation between Texas and the federal government, I'm not really sure that that has ever happened before. Um, and the level of violence and the cruelty of the violence, random and unnecessary cruelty in the New York City area is an example of what happens when you have a portal to the other dimensions the way that Washington DC, New York City area has. We have the issue of the bridge yesterday collapsing and many, many, many other issues. But let me give you, that was the bad news. Let me give you the good news. Uh, yesterday, our Montresa group went to the map of the United States that I drew yesterday. And here we have X's, which should indicate black magic, South Florida, and again, the Northeast. And then you have these peach orange lines squiggly across the country. Those have to do with the frequency shift. and the energies of the eclipse, which are wavy, and which is why we all feel a little bit mentally unstable, dizziness, ringing in the ear, um, um, mental confusion, etc. But look, Texas looks great. But this group of Montristas, we worked on Texas, and we were able to activate a type of other dimensional protection. I didn't when I do these maps, I really follow my protocol. I'm not thinking of what I want. I'm thinking of what's there. That's my job. That's what I do. So we were very happy with ourselves when we saw this. In other words, we have stabilized Texas in the other dimensions. What does that mean? Well, if those portals that in the previous map created chaos, then this should be a lot more stability. Oh, but what about this? Well, we worked on it. And by the end of the chat, and it was one and a half hours long, which is very long for doing remote viewing. And we had, according to the numbers, 450 people, a lot of people on Twitter, which was good. Um, and look what we created, what we purified. We took care of the black magic, South Florida. We took care of the black magic in the Washington, D.C., part of the Carolinas, I think, New York, et cetera. And we have orange, which is the color of evolution, 
green, which is the color of heart and healing. And I don't remember what this lavender is. I must have said something. And then the whole country looked a little bit more stable. It didn't have those orange lines, which are an indication of something good, but they are an indication of instability of the mind and the other dimensions being very wavy, not in order because we're changing. So this is how you all looked in the beginning of yesterday's chat. This is not lavender. It is lavender, but it's supposed to be black. But the pens that they sent me, the pen set, they didn't send black, they sent lavender, which is kind of good because it kind of like is an optimism that we're going to the crown chakra, which is where we're the safest. Okay, so everybody was very depressed and then they had all this red. What is that? One hour later, we did the chat we do in Spanish. We were going to study what's going on with the eclipse. Now, the people there were less depressed. A lot of them had already joined and done mantras at seven, but their root chakra was going down. Not the root chakra, the rage in their root chakra, which is the rage that people had in their third eye here yesterday at seven. Well, what is that? I'll tell you what it is. People are very angry, but we cannot express our anger adequately. We get on social media and we talk and we prove and look this, that. But that doesn't really take care of the level of anger that we feel that is totally legitimate. Even if we're wrong, it's legitimate. It's what we feel. But this indicates that the level of anger we feel is so much that it is being drawn into Mother Earth. This was after the bridge collapsed. What did that remind me of? 9-11, everybody went into compassion. I don't know, I may have said this yesterday, but I had not drawn this. 9-11, everybody went into compassion. 9-20, I had a panic attack. Nine days later, when I checked my body, my mind was in contact with a new fault line that had been just created underneath New York City. I went, wow. I said it on Univision television. I put it on my website and I said, there's a new fault line. Science is not going to validate that now. What you need to know is that four to six weeks after 920, there's a potential for an earthquake epicenter in New York City. I assumed that it wasn't going to happen, but my obligation is to document what I see, not to take care of my self-esteem. Prophecy is to tell you where you're going. Hopefully you'll get off of that path if it's not good. So I said something that was prophetic, but I really didn't know where it was going to go. I just said it because that's what I saw. Okay. 10-20-2001. 10, Four weeks after 9-20, when I said there was a potential for an earthquake in New York City. There was an earthquake in New York City. I wasn't even looking for anything. I never expected it. I just documented the way I'm supposed to. That's my job that I gave myself. I went, whoa. And so I was happy that I was right. And then I went, well, maybe there's a lot of earthquakes that present in New York City. No, they're not. I, there was only a couple and way back, but there was one six weeks after the election results in 2000. Epicenter, New York City. Okay, so the earthquake is due to repressed rage. This is what I did yesterday. So what were they so angry about in New York City about the 2000 election? Well, maybe that was a stolen election. At least New York was strongly Democratic and the Democrat didn't win. It was given to Bush. Remember, we had to wait so many weeks because of the little ballots and the chats. It was an earthquake. I, I don't know if it was four weeks, four and a half, six weeks, but it's between four and six weeks. Once that rage hits a level that Mother Earth can no longer contain what she absorbed from us, very quick, this was yesterday. 
this was yesterday this was yesterday an hour after this that's rage we're in trouble guys unless you guys can learn to do mantras it is what i'm trying to teach you mantras can process our legitimate reaction to what's happening. It doesn't matter if we're right or wrong intellectually. It doesn't matter if we have the facts right or wrong. It is our emotional reaction that is going to cause more catastrophes. Anyway, we worked on it and I showed you the map. Everything is looking much better. So now let's go ahead. Okay. And let's start with the rage mantra. Those of you that are super elegant, I'm not angry. Bullshit. You push your anger away so much that it ends up affecting the planet. You are a human being. Even Jesus Christ kicked the tables in the money changers temple or whatever it was. It's okay. It'll also transfer onto your kids. It transfers to every document you make. Your repressed anger, which is legitimate, is going to screw everybody up and you're going to have a smile on your face and be civilized. And everything around you is going to have to deal with what you refuse to find in yourself, which is a legitimate reaction. So we're going to do the rage mantra. And the rage mantra is going to be a purification vacuum cleaner mantra. And it's even though we hate and there's nothing we can do. We hate and there's nothing we can do. I love and accept myself. Estella, would you put that up for me, please? I would appreciate it. And I'm going to see if I, I'm, the word is I am discombobulated today. Uh, last night I realized what's really important to me. And that's for me to go home. What does go home mean? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Okay. She may not be here, so let me do it. No, I can't do it. That is not it. So even though I hate and there's nothing I can do, which by the way, is the mantra for cancer. For when you get cancer, it is due to a rage that you can't do anything about. And that's how we all feel. Okay. Self-assess yourself while I'm doing this. From 1 to 10, how do you feel? 1 is awful. 10, you feel great. Find and check yourself. We also did something really interesting afterwards. It made us all very happy. Your Estella did get it done for me. Thank you. The mantras are repeated in silence. You expel the breath through your mouth. We're going to choose the music that is going to reduce the fire element that is the basis for an elevated rage that we would not have if we didn't have all those solar flares all those radiating electronic devices, etc. If we had enough contact with nature, the nature, earth and water would be putting out some of that fire, but most of us don't. So we're going to be working on this. So I'm going to sketch you guys now while we start, and then I'll sketch you when we finish, and let's see what it is that we see. So here's the sensory therapy video that was designed for this, to reduce fire. We're gonna do 10 minutes, we really need it, all of us. It doesn't matter, the news is almost like set to trigger us. The solar flares are not father son helping us. Father son was invaded and cursed probably five years ago. I said it because I saw it when it was happening coincidentally, coincidentally. And scientists said that, that the sun had been under attack a couple of years ago. 
I thought, wow, it's nice to get some validation. Okay, so here we go. You repeat the word in silence. You expel through your mouth. You can take this to your root chakra because we have got to get this taken care of. It doesn't matter the work we did last night. Today you went back to the news and you read what's going on. Or somebody told you the news or you saw something happening in your own life. So here we go. Ten minutes. And look at the images because the images plus the musical notes all were designed to reduce the fire in your mind, which is what I'm sketching. These are mind maps. Okay.
We improved a lot. Look at my voice. This is how we started. This is us rejecting our rage, which goes into the underworld, which goes into Mother Earth, and is the basis for earthquakes and volcanoes. And then this is how we were a couple of minutes ago. I can see your mind streams, and we're no longer rejecting our rage to such an extent that it goes underneath into the underworld and into Mother Earth. So we improved. We are going to have to systematically address our reaction to end times and the apocalypse, disinformation, conspiracies, hatred, lack of touch. We have to address the emotional component. Our enemies off planet understand that we do not do well with emotions. So they actually don't need to use regular weapons to attack us. They have invented weapons of mass destruction, but that are spiritual and emotional. And they accumulate particles of depression. And I don't know if they're particles or what the nature of it is, but they accumulate the thought of, I want to die. Pull it together as a virus, throw it on planet Earth, which they've done several times in the last several years. And then all of a sudden, a zillion people want to die, but they don't say anything because that socially is not acceptable. It's usually the mothers dealing with their kids that I hear about, that the mothers can tell or that the children make a comment and then it, everybody goes ballistic. That virus is very easy to take care of. All you have to do is accept that inside of you, there's a little bit of that, not really wanting to live, which means really wanting to die a little bit. Even though I want to die, I love and accept myself. Or even though I'm depressed and want to die, I love and accept myself. Purify it out. Look how easily we took care of several inches, if not a foot of rage, in 10 minutes. Just do that mantra. Even though I'm depressed and want to die, I love and accept myself and it goes away. I had somebody on this platform who had a child who had that issue. I've known a lot of mothers whose kids have had that issue. But no, that's too simple. No. Too simple. When it comes to the truth, it's always really, really simple. But the people that want to control us make things complicated. And as I was always told, and I know that's true, if it takes more than se several sentences to explain something, you, you, you're not down to the, to the root. There is, I think, nothing so complicated that it cannot be sketched in the other dimensions to where you can say, ah, that's what's going on, which means it's really very simple. But you do have to go deeper. You have to know about it. And darn, if you still don't believe in the other dimensions and everybody who deals with the other dimensions you think is dealing with the devil, okay, or is trying to use that information against you, that's a big problem. That a lot of people have used it against you is accurate. That there are organizations that are centuries old that have been secret, that have that information, that's accurate. But guess what? If they had been open about it, they would have burned at the stake as if they were witches. Come on. We push them into undercover. We push them into hiding because we don't like something that we don't have under control. Okay. We're going to go into what is supposed to be the reason for us to be together, which is to learn how to create peace and prosperity in the midst of chaos. Here's the mantra. And I should have put at the end in the midst of chaos. So I'll change it while you're doing the mantra. And we're going to go ahead and do the trilling um, music, which is the sound of birds, which is the frequency of the mind strings. And the mind streams are what create reality. We're going to do 20 minutes of this. Two feet on the ground, feet on the floor. Go ahead and breathe into the root chakra, which is where we're having so many issues. I think we're all afraid. Forget whether it was a conspiracy or not. What are they going to do next? Okay. So then breathe into the root chakra, which is in between your legs. It's the lowest chakra until you get to the underworld. So don't go any further than that. And we'll do 20 minutes. And I will sketch you now at the beginning and then in the middle. And that white dress 
is for you to look at. It. And if you see it white and gold, you're okay. If you see it real shiny white and gold, then your frequency is good, which doesn't mean that you're smiling. It just means that you're truthful. You're living what you feel, whether it shows in your face or not, doesn't matter. And if you see it bronze and blue, your frequency is very low. So everything you touch is going to have that frequency. Your bank account, your resume, your children, yourself, because everything that we have in us transfers, whether it transfers out to our children, the people around me, except, et cetera, or whether we really, really repress it and it goes down into mother earth. So there's your, no, that's not your mantra. Here's your mantra. Let's do 20 minutes. Okay. I already feel a lot better. I feel a lot less negative and I feel a lot less vindictive.
Okay, we did 19 minutes. I love what I do. As we got, as we started the intention mantra for peace and prosperity, we started to release the rage. We still had some of the root chakra. Digestion's got to be pretty bad and a lot of people, because then it revealed this. When I sketch this, I obviously can't sketch everything. I sketch what's most prominent and what's most vitalized at this moment. We have a lot of rage in our mouth. But then, after several minutes, I sketched again, and we were hooked into the shipping incident, the boat, the bridge incident. This is a vector, which is an attention unit from our center axis, which is our causal body, which is the fundamental structure of the universe. And it juts out towards, shoots out a vector towards what we are paying attention to. And I'm sure most people weren't thinking of the bridge incident, but we're hooked on it. So we still don't look great. And then after a few more minutes, we unhooked from the bridge incident and our mind streams started to become green. So while we are hooked, even subconsciously towards something negative that makes us angry or insecure or frightened, we're going to create not a great reality and we're not going to do well. If we can unhook ourselves, we can create a great reality in spite of the chaos, in spite of the bridge incident, and in spite of the next 10 things that happen. This, these two sketches, now I understand even more deeply how we create reality and how we can, in the midst of the chaos that's coming and that we're living, can have a wonderful life, wonderful prosperity, wonderful peace, wonderful family, even if there's chaos, but we have to unhook. We can't be jutting out a vector from the fundamental structure of the universe, from what, from where everything is created. We can't be hooked onto the negative. Now, what does it say about us and look at listening to news? I think we do need to know what's going on, but I think we don't need to know it 50 times or 24 hours a day. And a lot of us have disconnected from news uh, a lot. We used to have it 24 seven, we don't anymore. We still have a lot. So we have to know that when something bad happens, we have to know about it because we're curious, a curious nature, most of us, and it affects us. And then we need to have a disconnect and then we need to process, but we'll disconnect when we make a decision we don't wanna keep taking in that information, which is part of our bank of elements that we use to create, we need to disconnect from it. And then it's no longer part of our system of creation. And we can have incredible prosperity, incredible peace, because what we use to create that is a very different quality than if we are connected by a vector to that incident and 20 incidents more. Now I'm going to tell you what happened last night. I'm going out again on a limb, but there really is no time to play games. And too many people have played games with the public in terms of not giving them enough information so they won't worry their pretty little head about it. Well, you know what? You need to know. And if it worries you, then you need to worry, do something about it or do a mantra, whatever it is. But you need to know because when it comes time to making a decision and you're part of the decision-making process, you need to have enough information. That's what intelligence community is all about is information and controlling information, accumulation, and then controlling it and spitting out what will take people in a direction that whoever it is, the powers that be decide that they want them to go in. So last night after this chat, we went ahead and I have been really upset about how my numbers are controlled on all social media and how 
I have a particular enemy within X, within the company, within the building, I'm not talking Elon. And I can see him, I can see his office. I could see that about a week and a half ago, he couldn't get into his office anymore, but I could see him right outside his office. Was he symbolically at his home, trying to get back in to get to the computer, to hook into the system, to control me and 10 other people, not just me. Last night, I was so angry. I said to the group that we get together with, I said, I wanna go after him. Why can't we defend ourselves? We are trying to help people. And with us, they have the option. They can do the mantra, not do the mantra, pay attention, not pay attention. They can look at it and not believe, but at least the information is there for them. And this man is stopping us. So I said, let's go ahead. Okay, so this is the part. Mm. ETs exist, spaceships exist, good aliens exist, bad aliens exist. We can deal and have negotiations and we do with aliens. We can also ask them for help. I mean, all of our gods or God comes from up there. What, what do you think that is? You think up there is on top of trees? No, it's off planet. Okay. So yesterday I was so angry and I said, because I could see the guy. I could see him right outside the office, whether he's physically there or just wanting to be there to get into that door. I don't know. But it doesn't matter. Energetically, he's there. I said, let's go after him. But being it that there's spaceships above planet Earth that are good, let's go up there, talk to them, and have them help us. We had so much fun. We had so much fun. And obviously, we were, we were like 450 people. And obviously, not all of them have this level of skills yet. But a lot of them do. I have the power of induction. They've been following me for three years. Some of my chats are super long, but that's all those hours in my field. And they pick it up and they want it. They want to be able to see and they want to be able to help. We went up, we talked to the aliens and said, we want to take this guy. We want to take down our enemy that's inside of X that has nothing to do with Elon Musk or the people that he has around him. It was in Spanish, in, in slang Spanish, it was a salpa fuera, which means a throw it out, but it's a cute word. And there was, there was all sorts of things going on that were very aggressive. And it lasted a long, I don't know, probably was more than 20 minutes. And it was, it turned out it was more than one person within X that's controlling me. And in terms of the person that controls me, my platform in X uh, controls 10 other people. And there probably are several of them. And they're inside, they're able to get into the company. They're inside the company and they're able to hook into the computer system. I don't know the language, but I suspect that we really rattled them and it was a lot of fun. And so somebody in the middle of the, ch in the middle of this salpa fuera says, well, we really should have compassion and we're not supposed to hate. And I went, you know what? They're not supposed to hate. Okay. That whole thing in the age of Pisces. Okay creates earthquakes and volcanoes. And honestly, I am just so tired and so fed up because I'm doing my best and it has nothing to do with money. I don't need the money for my social media. It would be nice to be compensated for my time, but I don't need it. It has to do with my mission. I have to get it out there. So she says, well, we should be compassionate. You know what? No. And we had a lot of fun and you should try it. Skip all the time you spend thinking, do aliens exist? And I wonder, and this is what this guy said and the other guy said, and this interview was three years ago and look what he said. Hello, 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 hello. We need you now. We don't need you looking at stuff from three years ago. The good guys are poised there, ready to help us and the bad guys are here inside. Okay, this is not a three years ago, look what these, this guy said and let's connect all the dots and look what it's pointing at. Pointing at what? It's a reality that's there. Why don't you skip all of that and either join us enough times that you get the confidence to do it or simply say, please God help me with my intention to get help from the good aliens. And then see yourself going up there and talking to them. 
and saying, I need help. What they asked us to do was to plant yellow flags wherever it is that we thought we could use their help, which we'd, it was a lot of fun. When you get into the other dimensions, it's simpler. It makes more sense. It's a lot more fun. You cut to the chase. You don't have to have an authority figure giving you permission to believe or not believe. You see what you see. You feel what you feel. What you feel. But you have to learn to have confidence in yourself. And for that, you got to get out of this debate. Do they exist? Do they not exist? Do human beings really have the ability? And are all psychics working with the devil? All psychics have dealt with the devil. Fire is the food of the devil. And this is how we all looked when we started here today. Lots of fire. So don't talk to me about working with the devil. Because you guys... When you keep reducing that legitimate frustration and rage, you are a little candy bar for the aliens that are disguised as, as the devil. We don't have enough time to do the last mantra, but I'm going to leave it up here and you can continue and I need to trolley on to my next chat. But I feel a lot better and I feel a lot happier. I love the fact that I learned that when we're connected to negativity, we get stuck and we stay in it. And when we do a mantra, and there are probably other things, walking in the park, nature, living in a cabin, whatever, uh, we disconnect and then we start to have wonderful changes to where we actually can have wonderful creations in terms of our life, even if 20 bridges go down in the United States. And it's found that it's a conspiracy. It doesn't matter. You created your own reality. But for that, you need to be full of the good stuff, images, thoughts, intention, confidence in yourself. And you cannot have any of that if you stay connected to negative news. You can't. See you tomorrow. Anyway, let me put up the last mantra. You can memorize it. Let's do the trust, because it's hard sometimes with all of this that's happening to trust that you can actually create a good life. Bye.